scripture reading for today, I will ask Dick Davis to please come forward and read our text. Scripture comes from Luke, seventh chapter, the 36th verse through the eighth chapter and the third verse. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman from that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him, according to the Pharisee, and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and another 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came to your house. You did not give me water for, to wash my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped in kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who has forgiven sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This ends the reading of God's word. Thank you, Dick. Now for our special selection, Days of Elijah, by our Chancellor Choir. Famine and darkness and sword. We are the voice in the desert crying, Prepare the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, standing at the sun, at the trumpet call. Lift your voices to hear a jubilee, and out of Zion's salvation. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. Be 
behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet's call. Lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet's call. Lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. We got a little contemporary spirit up in here today. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I like that. Amen, amen. My title today is A Grateful Heart, coming from the text that Dick read earlier, Luke chapter 7, where one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. And this was during Passover, so the city was full of people. And he went into the Pharisee's home and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the anointment. Some might wonder what in the world was the cause for all of this. We don't have a problem when our significant other comes and wraps their arm around us and shows us affection. We don't have a problem with it. Jesus who was worthy of this woman's adoration is also worthy of our adoration. And you know, I would say this woman didn't know, she was obviously not as religious as we are, she didn't know that she was supposed to wait until the Sabbath day and to go to the synagogue and worship the Lord with the congregation and singing together of hymns and songs of praise. She obviously didn't abide by the church protocol, but she obviously had heard the news on the street of how the officials were out to get Jesus. She had heard and had maybe even met those who had been healed and delivered of demons by Jesus. She certainly recognized the greatness of our Lord. But for some reason, the host of the house, Simon, felt differently. He criticized this woman. Mm. The problem Jesus had with this man was that he didn't display a grateful heart, but yet he criticized someone who did. And you know, it's not about saying our grace, God is great, God is good, and now we thank him for our food religion. It's not about praying at night. As I lay me down to sleep, I ask the Lord my soul to keep. Do we give him thanks only when he answers our prayers? Do we forget to give him thanks when he answers them? Shouldn't we have a grateful heart towards him at all times? Not just when we eat and when we go to prayer at night, when we go to bed. This woman had no shame 
and her unorthodox expression. Jesus just sat there and he soaked it up. And I would say that just like God blesses us when we need it, I dare say Jesus needed it. He had received so much persecution and ridicule. He needed someone to love on him and to thank him and recognize what he, who he was and what he was. And so she bowed before the Lord and she washed his feet with her tears. You know, we all have a way we can express our love and be intimate with the Lord. We should try it sometime. We should just shut down everything and turn on some hymns and praise songs for a day, for a week. Just have a praise God fast. I found that when I do that, it keeps my mind on the Lord. It keeps me uplifted. It takes me off my worries and my troubles. Just worshiping the Lord, just praising the Lord. <clears throat> Being saturated in glorious music to the Lord causes us to put our mind in heavenly things. And it helps usher us into the spirit of gratitude and helps us to remember all the awesome, wonderful things that the Lord has done for us and where he has brought us from. When we throw open our arms and embrace our Savior and tell him how much we love him, he opens up his treasure chest. And he pours out his supernatural blessings upon us. And I would dare say he did this for this woman. He has a way of filling our heart with unexplainable love that can't be explained only experienced. This woman didn't come seeking a blessing or asking of anything of the Lord. She simply came to worship the Savior. She came with an offering of expensive oil and she came with adoration on her lips and tears of gratefulness. We truly don't know what brought this woman to the Lord Jesus. All we can do is think about what would cause us to show such open display of intimacy to the Lord. And I would say it would have to be a whole lot going on on the inside. But we do know that she was in bondage or had been in bondage because the scripture says that her sins were many. And what I love about Jesus is that in spite of the naysayers, because I'm sure Simon was not the only one, in spite of the naysayers, Jesus publicly affirmed her. This forsaken woman coming and displaying herself like that, she should be ashamed of herself. <laughs> I tell you, if anybody did that to me, I'd kind of be embarrassed. But he publicly said to her that your sins are forgiven and that it is your faith 
that has saved you, now go in peace. Hallelujah. The bondage that she had that was holding her back, she was able to make her way to Jesus and to become free. Amen? Amen. I'm going to sing some songs. This is my singing of just worshiping the Lord. I'm going to sing some songs, and you can join in as you like. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. For that is what I want to do. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I Almighty God, there is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace, for that is what I want to do. I give. surrender to you that you might teach us to live a life and just take the time sometime to just adore you we know that in focusing in on you and giving you adoration and just being present with you Lord there is a liberation that comes and we thank you, Lord, for that liberation. We thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have here in this country to worship you. But Lord, let us take advantage of that liberty to live a life of praise and thanksgiving that through us, your joy may be manifested, that your life may be manifested that all the attributes of peace, all your attributes may be reflected through us so that others may be drawn unto you. In your name, Jesus, we thank you. And let all God's people say, amen. amen.